morning everyone and it's the first first good walk for a while where I'm wearing my uh, <laughs> where I'm wearing my coat again not because it's uh, too cold it's well it is sort of slightly cold the wind's a bit you know wind chilly as they say <laughs> it's a bit wind chilly um, but it's more a case of that it might rain I don't know if you can see um, the very, very uh, dark looking clouds in the background, but uh, yes, it's absolutely tipping it down uh, yesterday evening. Bit of thunder, bit of lightning, you know, all the good stuff. And it's done that uh, through the night as well. And also, it's the first time for a while, uh, I'm wearing my wellies as well, you know. Can't have a good walk without uh, oh, some wellies. But anyway, Joan and Kay, good morning to you. Catholic, good morning to you. Helen, good morning to you as well. Yes, it is indeed time for autumn. Uh, Cathal OG, good morning uh, to you from Meath. And of course, Pretty Bird, greetings to you as well. So like I say, say hello in chat, get your good mornings out. It's time for a right good morning walk. <laughs> and I think, I think to be honest, Given what's happened, because we all know what's happened. Oh, wow. Thank you very much, David Falconer. Um, thank you very much for your support. Uh, good afternoon from Hong Kong. Well, good afternoon uh, to you as well. And thank you very much uh, for your super chat. Thank you very much. I think given what's happened, obviously, uh, I don't think we can really not talk about it. <laughs> Even though it's probably... As I've said, taken up very much so the airwaves. Um, certainly since it happened, and it probably will continue uh, for the time being as well. Oh, White Rose, good morning to you from a very chilly Osset. <laughs> good morning to you, Ben Ridings. Good morning to you. Yep, the ERGR now very much in charge we'll be talking about them uh, probably in a good uh, good moment as well but yes as of course as you all very well in the middle know like I say this isn't going to take up too much time but to be honest I think we have to talk about it you know um, ever so briefly you know the Queen died um, you know and I'm not a monarchist but then I'm not also like, you know, as I've seen quite a bit from a lot of people, uh, I'm not an anti, well, a rabid, shall we say, anti-monarchist either. I just don't care <laughs> if it's, you know, I, I just I just fall into that category of, I, I, I just really don't care, I, you know. <laughs> um, but I will say this, for someone who, especially at a time where we've seen in America, and certainly in the UK, people who are in civil service, and have become very self-serving in civil service, I think the Queen very much did represent someone who did do her duty, and did you know, did her job. And I think in a time where we have seen a lot of politicians um, not do that, uh, I think it's something that should be at least acknowledged, sort of in that case. But yeah, other than that, like I said before, monarchy, don't really care, <laughs> you know? Um, but there you go. Um, obviously, you know, death of the Queen. You know, we've got a new king. <laughs> Who cares, you know? <laughs> um, it's just one of those things where I just don't care. I think there are far, far greater topics in this country that other people have far, far more responsibility for. 
and I think a lot of people love to focus on the Queen uh, a bit too much when maybe their focus should really be on Parliament. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's hard to get excited about Charles III, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the trilogy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> The trilogy is, is is now out. All the all those years of waiting for the <laughs> for the trilogy to be complete. It's now there for all to see. But yes, um, of course. Um, this is you know, going into a cost of living crisis. And I think you've got many Tories, many Tories certainly breathe, breathing a sigh of relief. I think a lot of Tories are certainly, certainly breathing a sigh of relief. Um, because now they've got, well, essentially uh, 12 days. Um, where they don't have to do anything anymore. <laughs> but as we've said time and time again uh, on this channel, our country is facing a series, a series of crises. And we've got a government who is not at all um, seriously up for the challenge that the current time really represents or at least even need I mean you've got this energy package that came out on Tuesday and it's not enough I, I really do believe you're going to get a couple of months in and there's going to be a case where the government's going to have to step in and do more. And the thing is, with the current government we've got, they're going to be very, very resistant to wanting to do more because this is a government that is very, very anti-interventionalist. You know, Liz Truss had been saying for the past month in a leadership contest, I, I, I don't want to give any handouts. <laughs> and I think they're going to have to do a massive U-turn. I think this policy that they've put in with energy is going to be toxic. I, I think it's going to be very, very toxic indeed um, to their party. And I think it's going to go down very, very badly. As I've always said, November, I think, is when it all kicks off. Because you've got September. The Tories have over a month at this point to put things, to put programs, to put policies in place to prepare for the winter. And we know this is gonna be a bad winter. You know, I think the Tories are praying that it's gonna be a warm winter, at least. But this is a crisis that is going to, I think, rumble on and I think going to do a lot of damage, a lot of damage. And the fact that the Tories are already not prepared for this, you know, it, it sends, sends out all the right signals that we've been saying for weeks. The Liz Truss is not prepared, the current Tory party um, is well. <laughs> incompetent to a degree um, 
no one I think ever could really ever expect of a UK main political party. Isn't it winter already? No, it's, it's autumn. <laughs> winter, winter's next month. <laughs> yeah. Winter's next month. <laughs> yeah. Gotta, gotta wait for winter a bit still. <laughs> Yep, exactly right. Uh, who is my home? Yeah, Hooten. A hugely expensive, poorly targeted sticking plaster. Exactly. Um, and this is unfortunately what we've come to expect. Um, you know, from the from the Tory party, it's what temporary measures can we get away? <laughs> with at least doing as cheaply as possible to try and, you know, win some short-term impacts. And I think you've got to look at the price freeze. The price freeze is, I think it's going to do so much damage. The freezing prices currently, and you're like, well, hold on a second. You're not bringing down prices with that price fees. All you're doing is to the already, you know, millions of people who already can't pay their energy bills. Oh, good morning, PE. You know, to the people who already can't pay their energy bills. They're basically saying, well, good luck. Um, Hope you make it through the winter. Um, you know the four hundred pounds that the that they're offering, uh, in some cases, isn't even going to scratch the sides for some people. Um, that's just the fact. This package is uh, not enough. It's too late. And it's not going to help out a situation that is only going to get worse. Because you see this package, if Boris Johnson had been bothered to, you know, get off his ass and not, you know, sulk like he has been doing for the past month or so, Boris Johnson could have released this very, very easily because this was the exact, uh, at least it seems the exact plan that they'd been talking about for the past couple of months. You know, so why didn't Boris go ahead and release it? Why didn't they release it then? Because this is, is, because the energy crisis in particular, it's a constant moving crisis. Where this package a couple of months ago, I think if they'd done it back then, would have been, I think, a lot more welcome, I think, to a lot more people. I think it still would have had its massive problems. But you're looking at a situation where now it needed it needed to be a lot more and a lot more deeper a lot quickly i think the fact that they haven't gone for a windfall tax and have basically told people well you're going to be paying higher energy bills you know for the next you know, 15 to 20 years. Um, yeah, not a good look. There you go. <laughs> bit of pony for you all in the morning. <laughs> to be honest, she's looking a bit bedraggled, but you know, I can't blame them. 
<laughs> I can't I can't blame them if they were left out like last night. You know. Yeah. And I keep ringing the alarm bell about businesses. I think if you're a SME in the UK or you work for an SME, which as we've said before, I think 16, I think it's like 16.2.3 million people either work for an SME or own an SME here in the UK. And, you know, you've got Jacob Rees-Mogg now. Um, to, well, try and, well, solve your problems, but, you know. Um, this is yet again someone who's not going to solve any problems and only make things worse because the worrying thing about Reese Mark is that he is a massive deregulist so he's in charge of a swathe of business regulations and workers rights um, It's not going to be good. As a lot of people have been saying, um, she's going to ha uh, Liz Truss is going to have to do a deal uh, with the unions. <laughs> and that isn't going to go down well. I think with her, you know, with her supporters in the right of the party. <laughs> That's what they've got, uh, you know, sorted out, and that's what they're going for. And remember, businesses aren't getting any help until this review happens. And this review is apparently going to take three months to do. So, if you think about it, this review takes three months which at any deliverable date brings us to, where are we now? So September, October, November, December. And then you're talking about implementation. If there's any, of course, implementation of this review. And I think it is Rhys Mogg who is carrying out this review so we know exactly what's going to be in it. More deregulation and more tax cuts because that's all they know how to do, <laughs> you know? It's as, as usual, an ideologically driven uh, idea and a lot of businesses are going to go down because of it. And just as you know people need help you know people need help so do these smes and you know you've got you know 16.2 million people employed by these companies And yet there's no help coming for them. Well, the government will argue and say differently that there is. But it will probably, at this rate, probably come in like January, maybe even February. And by then, for a lot of businesses, that's going to be too late. That's going to be far, far too late for a whole swathe of businesses who are already looking at this winter 
very, very nervously. And this will end up, uh, oh, Tom Nelson, good morning. <laughs> yes, it is a wee bit wet there. Like I say, look at this pony. Look at him here. <laughs> Oh, Loki's children, good morning to you. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can see how wet he is, but he's pretty wet. <laughs> like I say, we've got this. Okay, there's one here. And. Um, this, this pony desperately needs help. I don't know if you can see this guy's hoof here. He desperately needs, he desperately needs a hoof trim. <laughs> or at least something. <laughs> I don't know if you... I don't know if, what, if it's like a hoof trim or something like that, but yeah. So, this is going to be a big problem because I, I think it, if you get, you know, I think we've talked about this before that if these, like one of these businesses closes, you're talking roughly around maybe about 10 or 20 jobs going in the UK in like a in like a small business in like a in like a town or even a city and you know maybe the economy can absorb you know the local economy can absorb that type of um, you know closure but I think you're gonna have I think you're gonna be in the thousands of you know you're just gonna be in the thousands worth of uh, of business closings or Businesses having to make really hard decisions. And, you know, I, I, I said it yesterday in a video that um, if these, if these businesses aren't supported, it will be, it will be very much a disaster economically. And I think a lot of people on the left don't really realize um, the extent to how much you need, you know, small and medium enterprises because they're the backbone of the UK, um, especially here. You know, 90, I think it's what is it? I think I posted it uh, yesterday. 99% of all business activity in the UK is carried out by SMEs. <laughs> and I think people get confused when we talk about SMEs. Because, it's, uh, you know, small and medium enterprises they can represent something anywhere from at least companies that have, you know, maybe over 50 employees to up to 500. These aren't big multinational companies, you know, that we're talking about. You know, <laughs> we're probably talking about, as I've shown you before, 
um, you know, I, oh, you can't see it, but <laughs> it's over there. <laughs> you know, when we're on our good morning walks, you see a big building contractor. Um, I think roughly, I think I've looked into it before, they have like um, 300 employees. Now imagine if that company was to close down. That's 300 people in this local economy having to look for jobs. That's going to be incredibly hard on the economy to try and accommodate all those job losses at once. And it can only take, it can only take about, you know, maybe like one or two, uh, one or two or three, even three of those companies closing down, um, you know, in a short period of time. And all of a sudden they've got 300 companies each, you know, three, well, 300, um, you know, employees each. That's, that's that could be like, 900 people plus you know close to a thousand people in a local town looking for a new job and the economy would struggle at least the local economy would struggle to accommodate that many people to getting them back into work or to finding them another you know, to finding them another job. It's not necessarily, uh, you know, an easy thing to do. There we go. <laughs> oh God, yeah, I have my, hang on. My fingers have, Fumbled. There we go. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, I think that's the economic reality that a lot of people, um, you know, on the left, don't really understand you know, when we're talking about these SMEs that need help because that's the consequence that's the consequence of not helping these people and it's fine if enough is enough you know wants to support you know people who are struggling at this time but if those people who are struggling let's say they work for an you know sme which is very very likely up oh, nickel smith <laughs> loud and clear thank you very much <laughs> Um, you know, if you're, um, you know, if you're struggling already and then you're, the company you work for is an SME that closes down, <laughs> bang goes your job. You know, that makes things even harder for you. So it really, really is um, you know, they need to talk about helping businesses at this time as well. And it's not just the SMEs that need help. It's, as I think someone just pointed out, the macro enterprises as well. And a macro enterprise is counted as, I think it's someone with like less than 10 employees. And they need help as well. <laughs> you know, what do you do? Um, I think as we posted about this week as well. What do you do if you're that cafe owner in Leicester um, that happens?
you know, that there's, you know, what is it? The, the woman and she has like seven employees. Well, if <laughs> energy prices just render her cafe just unworkable, that's her livelihood gone. And that's seven other employees livelihoods gone and just as we talk about the worry that you know SMEs are going to close I think you're going to see a lot of macro businesses close as well and that will be very hard because it's all about how many job losses sort of local economies can absorb and we saw this back in 2008 you know, there were a lot of companies who um, did fail, did panic, who, which, which led to redundancies and maybe it managed to, to save themselves. We've seen this through, you know, the pandemic as well. Uh, I myself worked for a, a company that had to, to downsize because it had no money coming in. Um, and Rishi Sunak was dithering about whether he would, whether or not he would extend furlough. And the company took the decision that if it had to survive, it would have to make redundancies. Now, luckily the company did survive, but it was a company of about 25 people that got cut down to four. That's a, that's a lot of people for a company and a big downsizing you know, for the company to take, but it had no money coming in. And I think you're probably looking at another situation like that. Yeah, it is. Um, and I know I'm not alone in that as well. Um, I had a friend who worked in Sheffield and the company that he was working for got rid of their entire sales team during the pandemic. I think there was about uh, seven people in that entire team just went like that. And those stories are pretty familiar. Those stories are pretty familiar throughout the pandemic. And I think you will, I think you will be hearing very similar stories in the coming weeks and months. And it's really not good. And I think as, I think it was Mithril, uh, I, saw, I saw your comment just a bit, uh, a bit ago, and I really do agree with you on this. Um, the left has a really, really difficult time talking about business, but it's not really that difficult to talk about because what it comes down to is should your business, you know, if it is having sort of a certain level of success, pay taxes? Yes, absolutely it should. Um, but it is also up to us to allow those companies to grow as well and encourage them to grow. Because if you get, let's say you start off a business as a, as a one man trader in like the IT world, you know, you start doing business and then you have to hire more people. That's great for your local economy. That's great for the people who get hired as well, because now not only are they employed, they're paying national insurance, they're paying tax as well. You know, that's good for the economy. <laughs> And if you can give incentives, you know, for these companies to grow, then yes, we should talk about the fact that we do want to see companies grow and succeed. But so many people on the left don't even seem to understand when you're talking about business, the second you start to talk about that, they immediately think, to these big multinational companies and that's where they get stuck and that's where they get stuck at and they can't seem to see 
beyond that. You know, as we said before, when I think 95% of our business infrastructure is you know, taken up by SMEs, these aren't big multinational companies. They're as, as you know, companies that you know are important. Yeah, ever said, yeah. Oh my god, I sound like a Tory. But that's part of the problem that the left has. Um, that it, it such shies away from talking about business. And I, I don't really understand why they they run away from talking about businesses. And it's very easy to, to, you know, differentiate from the big multinationals to down to like, you know, the SMEs to these, you know, macro businesses. Or, you know, people who are, you know, starting up. So one of the things, so one of the things the left could actually do to encourage business growth is to talk about collective businesses or cooperatively owned businesses. There are a lot of rules and regulations, and even banks don't tend to uh, or shy away from investing in cooperatively owned businesses. So it is up to the left to change those rules so that you can encourage that. You know, Dan Jarvis, who a lot of people would describe as um, a Blairite, um, you know, member of the Labour Party, you know, my local MP. You know, he set up a cooperative um, business support centre to help businesses either transition to be a cooperatively owned company or for people to set up those types of things. <laughs> and um, and that's a good thing, but that's not talked about a lot on the left. I think that's something that we should celebrate. Um, Especially, you know, a lot of people who, you know, want socialism. Well, you've got an exact example there. But the problem is, it was set up by Dan Jarvis, who was a bit of a Blairite. So the left don't really like to talk about it. Because all of a sudden, starts to put a bit of a damp squib on their argument that, you know, the quote, right wing of the party um, doesn't do lefty things and then we need to look at how do you support um, businesses going forward you know for people on the left you know how do we talk about you know being pro-business on the left it's not a dirty word um, you know for people to shy or shirk away from you need businesses for your country in order to succeed to you know run your economy you know and make it work it's not just all about you know the public sector even though again the people working in the public sector is also good as well so there is a need Yeah, you need cooperatives. Exactly. I, as I said, you need to, the left needs to talk about more stuff. Yeah, business is too vague a term. Well, it's, it's not because what is, you know, businesses? Well, it's as you can see here a big business park, sort of obscured by these trees. I think when I've looked into it, I think there's roughly um, 
I think at least maybe like a thousand plus people, maybe somewhere, maybe up to like 2000 people, maybe more, um, sort of work on that business industrial estate. You know, that's a good thing. You know, they might be sort of a lot bigger businesses because I've said, you know, um, you know, the company over, over there, quite a big company. But then it provides a lot of employment opportunities, you know, for local people. And so long as, well, you know, they want to pay their fair share of tax, you know, that they're not doing anything, you know, dodgy by, you know, getting out of it, of not paying tax, and, you know, and they're treating their workers right, you know? What's the, you know, what's the big problem, you know? Oh my God, you know, uh, the, the, the rich, yeah. I get it, I know. Socialism, you know, so, you know, socialism, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there's nothing wrong with, I think, celebrating people's success. And one of the big reasons, one of the big reasons why I think you see a lot of big business leaders lean more towards um, certainly like the Conservatives and even the Lib Dems is because they talk about, you know, they talk about uh, businesses and how to support businesses. And there's a fantastic guy uh, who runs Webmart. I'm trying to remember what his name is now. Simon Billcliffe. That's his name. And he has uh, <laughs> an amazing TED talk where he talks about his, his theory of Marxist capitalism. And even though he is sort of the owner of the business, he brings employees to help support in the businesses. They get to make you know, more decisions. They get a share in the business. So when the business is doing well, you know, they get more bonuses, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's so much stuff people on the left could be talking about. And I think it's, you know, it's something on the left people don't, they don't talk about. I think it's quite wrong because what happens is all the business owners go over to being on the left. Or oh, well, we could bring some of the business owners, you know, uh, over to the left. You know, and get them to support. Um, you know, as in that way, and I think because they don't, um, is it any wonder why most of the business owners in the UK are, you know, Tory supporters or, um, you know, all or Lib Dem supporters? You know, it's it's not rocket science, um, and it's something the left I think really needs to come to terms with. That talking about you know business and enterprise is something that we need to sort of really talk about on because the left, as I've said before, bad at foreign policy, good when it talks to certain economic things but bad when you know it comes to talking about sort of enterprise and you know people succeeding
so and you are right nicole uh mithril sorry um we do need to go away with this the growth mantra <laughs> yeah caps lock sorry <laughs> yeah um we do need to move away from everything is about growth and not everything you know the sign of a good business isn't about growth um and you are right that need, that needs to be moved away from and we need to sort of disconnect how well an economy is really doing based on growth but also we've also got to say growth isn't a bad thing because as i said if you've got a you know if you've got a company you've got a one-man band you know maybe in the it and you expand you grow to, to employ you know five more people within like three years that's fantastic that should be celebrated if you end up growing even more to i don't know 30 people in another i don't know 10 years or another five years or something like that um that is also fantastic news because that means there's now more jobs people employed in your local economy so growth itself needs to be decoupled from being the be all and end all of you know economic aims and achievements because you cannot achieve permanent infinite growth uh, it, it's <laughs> just impossible it's impossible to sustain so let's go back to you know our example of let's say you're that guy who was a one-man band and now you're now employing 30 people but you're employing 30 people and let's say at 30 people you you stay at that level well that's fine that should certainly be you know, celebrated as well, because here you have a business that is working, that's employed over, you know, 30 people in your local area that is paying taxes, that is treating its workers well, you know, allows them to be, you know, part of unions or, um, you know, encourages them to sort of, you know, all, all kinds of, you know, good stuff you can encourage in a business or stuff on the left that you know we want to sort of encourage you know worker you know businesses not to exploit their workers but you know look after them <laughs> what more what more could you want what could you ask for um here we are oh no <laughs> little boy there you go Uh, but yeah, it's, it's something on the left that um, I, I don't think we've got to sort of not shy away from talking about. Um, businesses want to, you know, are, are important, they're good for the economy. Um, and it's something the left sort of has to acknowledge. And I know that a lot of people in the chat have been saying, oh, set up cooperatives. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think cooperatives uh, are a good model for people to follow. But what we need to do is the left needs to change the rules to encourage sort of banks to support cooperatives so that cooperatives get support. And there are a lot of cooperatives up and down the United Kingdom. There's a fantastic uh, cooperative in Glasgow that's a brewery. Can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure you'd be able to find it if you look up... Um, you know, cooperative, um, you know, uh, brewery in, in, in Glasgow. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to find it very, very quickly. Um, you know, I, I think the left should support a and, and champion a, a business like that. 
And at the same time, they should also be supporting businesses like this as well. Well, at the same time, keeping that, you know, lefty message. Don't let the workers be exploited. Make sure that they've got good, you know, compensation, that they've got good packages, and that there are rules in place to stop workers from being exploited. You know, you can still support businesses like this and still say that. You know, you can still say that. Again, living wage, Catholic gets it right, yes, as well. Yeah, we can support. There's a ton of stuff we can still say on the left. You know, we can support a living wage. We can support more support for cooperatives while still encouraging people to go into business themselves. And, you know, you know, as we said, the, um, you know, our example of, you know, our, our IT guy who starts off as a one-man band and then, you know, maybe 10 or you know, 15 years later, he's, he's employing 30 people to work in his, his IT company. That should also be celebrated. And, you know, it's, it's not hard to do, but we would bring poor people over um, to, our, to our side of things if we started to talk about, you know, business in a pro-positive way. And I think that's something on the left we really need to start talking about. And there are people who do, do talk about it like that. But of course, we are at the end of our walk. <laughs> oh no, crab, oh no. <laughs> you've, you've joined us at the last minute. Next thing, well, if you haven't got a notification, uh, remember to hit the, remember to hit the bell. Um, but so, yeah, this Catholic said YouTube's really bad <laughs> for this. Um, also, look out for. Um, I, I'm started doing now some sort of short videos called my Good Morning Short. <laughs> uh, I've been uploading them this week, so watch out for those in the coming weeks as well. Give those a like. Um, you know, I hope I hope you're enjoying those. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sometimes really difficult to try and you know fit what might be a, a big topic to talk about into like 60 seconds but I've so far so far been managing it this week um we'll see if that continues <laughs> we'll see if that continues um but yes as always uh thank you very much for joining me on the good morning walk like I say please do remember to hit the like share and subscribe button Chronic is right uh you get some uh, nice emojis like I say the more of you will join um the youtube thing not only to get a nice little badge next to your name you also get access to emojis that you can use on live stream you also um because i believe it was uh nicole who used hers today i believe if you do join up uh, to the uh, pony club you get one free super chat a month that you can use so remember uh, to use those and of course <laughs> as you are right get this bit the wind the wind is just going to be yet again becoming a problem. <laughs> yeah, you've enjoyed a summer without the wind, and now it's back, back with a of vengeance. <laughs> but as always, um, thank you very much once again for joining us in the Good Morning Walk. Um, like I say down below, you've not only got the YouTube uh, YouTube uh, support link that we've just talked about, we've also got my Patreon page as well. There's the one-off donation link called Buy Me a Coffee. You've got the also the YouTube uh, one, the thank you button that's also down below as well. So thank you very much to all those people who do support uh, the channel like that. And even if you just, you know, come along to the channel and you hit the like or share button, thank you so much as well for the support you show as well. Because I know hard times are, are sort of coming ahead for a lot of people. So even if you just hit the, uh, you know, the like and share button, you know, that's fantastic as well. So as always, um, thank you very much, um, as always, to come along to today's Good Morning Walk. Like I say, oh, um, will I be here next Saturday? That's a fair point. I don't think I will be here next Saturday. I think I could be in Manchester. Um, I'm an AGM uh, next week. I think it is. Is it the 17th next weekend? I can't remember now, but I think it is. Um, so, yes, as always, like I say, I'll let you know. Um, if not, yeah, that's the case. We might do a, a Friday morning. As always, 
thank you very much for watching like i say please do remember to hit that like and share button on your way out and of course remember to leave a comment after the stream ends that also helps with the algorithmic things as well as always as we say if you can't be safe be sensible uh, keep yourself safe as